Uh, good, mor good morning, good afternoon. What time is it? Afternoon. Um, I am Kristen Cloutier. I represent House District 60, which is part of Lewiston. Uh, Representative Fecto. Good afternoon, Justin Fecto. I represent House District 86, uh, which is part of Augusta's capital. Uh, Representative Fay. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jessica Fay. I represent House District 66, which is parts of the towns of Casco, Poland, and Raymond in the beautiful Sebago Lakes region. Representative Corey. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm um, Patrick Corey. I represent House District 25, which is part of Wyndham. Um, let's see, Representative, um, I don't see Representative Hymanson or um, Cardone yet. So how about Representative Millett? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Stowen Millett, House District 71, including the citizens of Norway, Sweden, Waterford, and West Paris. Great. Um, Senator Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Davis, and I represent Senate District 4, which is all of Scattercross County and parts of Somerset and Penobscot. Senator Bailey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. I am Donna Bailey, and I represent the residents of Saco, Old Orchard Beach, Hollis, Lemington, and part of Buxton. And my co-chair, Representative Purse. Good afternoon, Teresa Purse, the House uh, co-chair of AFA, and I represent District 44, which is the majority of Falmouth. And my name is Kathy Breen. I represent six and a half communities in Cumberland. Oh, Representative Arata. My apologies. That's okay. Well, good afternoon. It's nice to see everybody. Uh, my name is Amy Arada, and I represent House District 65, which includes New Gloucester and part of Poland. Thank, Thank you. Gary. Thank you for making sure I didn't skip over you. All right. So again, I'm Kathy Breen. I represent six and a half communities in Cumberland County. I serve as Senate Chair of Appropriations. Um, Chair Brennan, would you like to lead... Uh, introductions of your education colleagues. Uh, you're on mute. Thank, thank you, Senator, and I'd be happy to. Um, I am Michael Brennan, and I represent District 36, 36, which is part of Portland. And I would then uh, recognize Representative Dodge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Jan Dodge. I represent House District 97, Belfast, Northport, and Waldo. Good afternoon to everyone. And Representative McCray. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Dave McCray. I live in Fort Fairfield, up in the center of Crown of Maine, Rooster County, and I represent District 148. And Representative Millett. Good afternoon, I'm Rebecca Millette. I represent House District 30, which is most of Cape Elizabeth. And Representative Salisbury. Uh, good afternoon, I am Sue Salisbury and I represent House District 35, which is part of Westbrook. And Representative Sampson. Good afternoon from the lovely state capital. I'm Representative Heidi Sampson, representing the good people of House District 21, that's Alfred Limerick, Shapley, Newfield, and Parsonsfield. And Representative Roach. Good afternoon from beautiful Wells, Maine, District 7. And happy birthday to the state of Maine today. <laughs> Thank you. And um, uh, Sandra, I, I would just also note the fact that we have our analyst, uh, Hillary Risler, uh, joining us, as, long as, our, as well as our committee clerk, uh, Sam Baker. Thank you. Um, and we have Representative Cardone who just joined us. Representative Cardone, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Barbara Cardone. I represent House District 127, part of Bangor. And it looks like um, Representative Hymanson might be jumping on. We'll give her a minute. So she, there she is, she can introduce herself. You're on mute. You'd think I'd get over that by now. Um, I'm uh, Representative Patty Hymanson. I proudly represent House District 4, which is parts of York, Wells, Sanford, and all of Algonquit. 
And we are also joined by our wonderful uh, analyst, Maureen Dawson, and our clerk, Marianne McMaster. Um, and just to set the stage for the folks who are watching, we are gathered uh, jointly together to go over the report back that edu the Education Committee has, um, has put together in response to the, bu the biennial budget that the governor proposed. So we had a joint public hearing where we heard from the departments of education as well as from the public and other entities that are uh, overseen by the education committee. And um, th the education committee has looked over all those budget uh, details and now they are reporting back to us with their uh, committee's positions on those various parts of the bu proposed biennial budget. So this is essentially a discussion between the two committees. Um, and certainly if there are questions that arise um, that are where we need more information from the department or from any other third member, third parties for that matter, um, our analysts will certainly be uh, taking notes and tracking down that information. Um, so we can have it at a later date. So um, before we begin, um, I just want to make sure, I just want to see if there are any questions, um, make sure folks have the Education Committee report back available to them. I have it on another screen, so I'll be following along online. Some people might be doing that or have it on paper in front of them. Um, so I wanted to just make sure folks are, are ready to go. Um, and I guess um, I would ask Chair Brennan uh, to probably walk us, walk us through it. Well, uh, thank you, Senator Breen. I, I appreciate it. And unless instructed otherwise, <laughs> um, what, I, what I thought I would do is start with uh, the resection part of our report back uh, that basically has to do with new initiatives. Um, that we did have pages of uh, proposals in the budget that we did vote in um, that uh, really had to do with uh, staff changing and relatively minor uh, adjustments to the budget in different ways. Uh, so we spent the, the majority of our time discussing what, uh, again, it might not be the correct euphemism, uh, to say that they're new initiatives, but uh, they're the major parts of uh, the education budget that we'd probably want to draw your attention to. So um, that makes sense to me. Okay. So uh, our staff person, um, Ms. Resler, has prepared prepared a report back uh, to you, and there's a narrative format. I does everybody on the committee have that? I believe so. Okay. Great. So the very first uh, item uh, that was up for discussion is reference number 759, and it had to do with general purpose aid to ed education. And, and Chair Brennan, would you yeah. just make sure as you go through, you just reference the page number for us? I, I mean, I, I can see that's, that's on page two, but just, you know, just for the public and anybody else. Um, according to the note I have here, it says report back, it's on page 29. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, but again, it's the, the, the uh, memo that she sent to you. It's uh, the start of the second page. That's right. Okay, so we're all in the same place. Uh, I'm looking at the memo um, page two. Right. Great, okay, thank you. Okay, so in the governor's proposed budget, um, there was a fairly modest uh, increase to general purpose aid to education, uh, $22 million in each year of the biennium. Um, that would, uh, would have increased uh, the percentage of state age, aid by a, a, a fairly nominal amount, but still moving us uh, in a direction of uh, achieving 55% uh, of funding. Uh, a majority of people on the committee uh, voted to recommend 55% uh, funding in each year of the biennium for general purpose aid uh, to education. And as all of you know, in 2004, there was a statewide referendum requiring the state to fund education at 55%. The, 
the legislature at that time, the next year, adopt a five-year plan to get 55%. Um, but uh, we've had a recession and a couple of other things in between and not ever uh, gotten to that 55%. Uh, so the education committee thought it was important uh, to continue to state the fact that the state um, uh, has a, a, a legal commitment um, to funding at 55%. And uh, uh, we believe that this recommendation is in keeping with uh, previous recommendations from the Education Committee and reflects uh, uh, current state law. Uh, based on rough estimates by the Department of Education, it would cost anywhere from 95 million to 100 million a year to achieve uh, that 55%. Uh, we did have uh, two people on the committee that voted to adopt the governor's recommendation. And then we had one person on the committee, Representative Stanson, that presented a fairly um, detailed alternative uh, to the governor's uh, proposal. And again, you uh, can see the narrative uh, that uh, ha has been described in the report. And I wouldn't uh, pretend to be able to describe with great uh, uh, detail what has been proposed by Representative Sampson, but if anybody on the committee chose or wanted to ask her additional questions, uh, I guess that this would be the time to do that. Um, sure, I can see the, uh, the entire narrative, including Representative Sampson's proposal. Are there any members of appropriations who have any questions about the, uh, this particular piece of feedback? Representative Corey, Representative Arata. Yes, since um, Representative Sampson appears to be on the call right now, if she wants to present um, her initiative, I wouldn't mind hearing from her on that. Um, do you have it in front of you, Representative Corey? You do, okay. Yes, I do. Okay, Representative Rada, do you have an, something on this particular part? Is that? Um, well, are, are we asking questions particular to GPA in general or only to Representative Sam, uh, Sampson's? Uh, this section, you know, bef okay. this, this section that, of the narrative that they're giving us feedback on, I would say. Okay, so, so my question regarding the 55% calculation, is that inclusive of teachers' retirement that's paid for by the general fund or or not? No. No. no it, it, it's just a general purpose aid to education. So if it's inclusive of teacher retirement, what would the percentage be? It would it would be above 55%, would it not? Well, I I I, I know Representative Arata that uh, obviously this has been an item that's been debated um, <clears throat> by this committee and others uh, in the legislature in the past. And um, uh, uh, merging the two together um, uh, has, uh, again, it's been a, a source of debate. I don't know if you took the retirement, you put it into GPA, uh, what the percentage would be, but I suspect that you're right that it would be uh, in excess of 55%. Uh, but okay. that's a policy question that uh, has been debated. And at this point, they two have remained separate. So the, the calculated GPA as, as presented by the administration, the 51 point something percent, is that inclusive of teacher retirement or? I do, not, I, do, I do not believe that it is. Okay. All right, I, I guess that answers my question, thank you. Um, so I'm holding uh, Representative Corey's uh, question in my head because I'm going to get to it. But in the meantime, I'm trying to figure out if Representative Fecto also has a question on this section. Is it related? Can you come? Yeah, can you come on and ask it? Thanks. Uh, yes, yes, Madam Chair. I just had a question about Representative Sampson's uh, amendment. I'm pretty sure I understand but I just wanted to make sure that Representative Sampson voted the initiative in, but it was not the in with the amendment of the majority of the committee. Is Do I have that? And so it's, well, it's voted. If you don't mind, let, why don't we let Representative Sampson um, speak to it and what 
you know, what, what she proposed and how she voted. Would that be okay? Senator Breen, uh, yes. if I could just interrupt for a second um, and maybe explain how we voted, um, that would answer Representative Fecto's question and going forward to understand that we took a vote of the committee, but if people had um, uh, uh, other suggestions or other uh, directions that they want to move in, we uh, as a committee decided to note those within our report. So uh, e even though it wasn't a, a, a majority uh, this way or that way, uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody had a voice and that uh, they were able to present that uh, to the committee. Okay, uh, so if I, if I understood that correctly, Chair Brennan, um, the, the, um, the items that are in this report back that are not within the four walls of the governor's proposal are noted and there's a, are described, but you did not take any votes on it. Is that correct? No, we, we did take votes, um, but we didn't necessarily, we didn't take a vote uh, whether we supported Representative Sampson's position or not. Uh, the majority vote is articulated uh, in the report. And then we also noted that there were two people that voted another way. And we also noted that Representative Sampson had a third way. So um, we wanted to be fair in terms of presenting those uh, uh, to the committee as well. Okay, um, looks like my co-chair has her hand raised. Just a clarifying question to that because I looked on page 29 of the report back. It appears that you all have voted in at the base level, the governor's recommendations, but then there's a series of differences around what you might do in addition to that. Is that an accurate representation or am I misinterpreting that? Well, I, I, we, I don't think that the vote um, on GPA that it does, in fact, that it, it does represent that we voted in the governor's proposal. Um, I, I, the narrative that is provided by our staff analyst uh, represents the vote and there were three different votes uh, on the committee. Or, or I, I should say, not votes, three different reports. Um, we, we had one vote on the 55%, and then we had two uh, other reports in addition to that. And as you go through our narrative report, you'll find a similar format that we used where we would vote um, uh, the majority, but we would also uh, indicate what uh, uh, other people on the committee uh, voted. So I think the fairest way to look at it at this point is that we did not vote in uh, the governor's recommendation on GPA and a majority of people on the committee are recommending 55%. Okay. Um, Representative Corey, is there something else before we have turned to Representative uh, Sampson? Sure, just out of curiosity. So, so basically the the only thing that really was kind of actually voted in here would be minority report a and that would be re that would reflect the 22 million five in each of those lines right now we don't have a report on how much the majority reports going sure. to cost and it seems like minority report B splits up that 22 million five in maybe a different manner than uh, what the um, governor had proposed. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the majority report was 55%. Um, there were two people on the committee that voted in the governor's recommendation and one person on the committee uh, that uh, voted a third recommendation. Yes. Is there some napkin math for the 55% or? Uh, as I indicated, um, the department on Friday, when we did this late Friday afternoon, uh, their very quick calculation was, I believe, $97 million in order to achieve the 55%. So $97 million over two years? I believe that Over 2021, 20, 22, and 22, 23, years at $97 million per? I... I, I did not, I think it's 97 million per year, but I could be mistaken about that. Representative okay. Millett has her hand cool. up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's for one year because the cost of education changes every year. 
Right. You redo the state allocation every year of the biennium. So it'd be for just this one year. And that, that figure that Representative Brennan is offering is <clears throat> the total cost, um, not on top of the governors. It would, if, if we were to just vote in 55%, that's the number that would be um, required to get us to there, which includes the governor's um, allotted money in, in her proposal. Thank you. Um, Representative Sampson, would you like to um, describe your um, version of this section? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so let me just quickly address Representative Fecto's question, because that would be the easiest, uh, is yes, I voted this in. And it was the 22,500,000 for just the by fiscal year 21-22. And that um, this is, so the plan is to basically reallocate it. And the first, so it's in two parts. Essentially it's about two thirds and a third. Uh, the first um, initiative is a school reopening incentive program with a one-time allocation of $17 million. This program would be established and administered by the Department of Education School and then the school administrative units that provide a 100% in-person instruction for a full year would be eligible for funding from this program. And the funds would be distributed at a rate of 50 cents per day per student. So this would be direct payments to the school administrative units that would be made no later than August 1st, 2022 and 23 that year. And no additional conditions would be placed on the receipt of those funds. The school administrative unit would use these funds as they find it necessary. So should there be federal funds that become available and there's flexibility in the funds that those would supplant the general fund allocation. The second portion of this would be the parent relief program with a one-time allocation of $5,500,000. The Department of Education would establish the program for the parents of students whose schools are not providing 100% in-person instruction. The Department of Education would be responsible for developing an application process and administering the program. The program would provide that beginning in September 1, 2021, a parent may submit a request for reimbursement. And if eligible, the Department of Education would reimburse the parents $15 a day on a monthly basis. Okay. Thank you, Representative Sampson. Thank you. Uh, Representative Fecto. Thank you, Madam Chair. And so my question is, after hearing that, that Representative Sampson's vote assumes that the second portion, the 22 and a half million and 22, 23 would be funded directly through GPA and it would be not part of this split program initiative, is that correct? Correct. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I think we're gonna move on, um, yep. Chair Brennan, to the next part of your report back uh, related to Maine School of Science and Mathematics. Correct. And um, uh, again, this was a unanimous vote uh, of the committee uh, to provide a one-time appropriation of $450,000 uh, to the main school of science and mathematics. Um, we had a presentation uh, from the director of the school that indicated uh, they have some financial difficulties due to the fact that uh, they were unable to have as many uh, students uh, from other countries uh, attend the, the school. And as a result of that, their tuition uh, had been reduced. Uh, so the committee uh, voted uh, again unanimously for the $450,000 one-time appropriation. And you can see uh, what the, the strikeout uh, and, and the increase uh, would be to $4,065,347.
Any questions from appropriations about that? All right, want to move on? Um, <clears throat> the next proposal um, was supported uh, uh, by 12 members of the committee and only opposed by one. Um, and this would increase uh, the supplement or increase the reimbursement for teachers to become nationally uh, board certified. Uh, this is a national program that uh, teachers uh, become part of. Uh, it's a fairly rigorous program. It's a, really a way for us to uh, have more master teachers in the state of Maine. And it's also, there's a, a, also a differential pay to uh, teachers that uh, uh, teach in low income schools. So it's a way for us to increase um, the uh, uh, number of teachers in the profession that are increasing their ability to teach and also to put the uh, teachers in places where they might have the most impact. I would, uh, Representative Millette uh, put together this proposal. So if you had specific questions about um, uh, the mechanics of this in terms of the funding, uh, she might be in the best uh, position to answer uh, those. But as you can see, the initiative is uh, uh, for $556,400 uh, increase over what uh, the governor had in her budget. So I see questions from uh, Representative Fecto and Representative Peirce. Okay. Uh, Representative Fecto, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had a question perhaps for Representative Millette. Uh, would this additional um, increase increase the stipend amount uh, or um, the number of teachers eligible for it, or is it a little bit of A, a little bit of B? Thank you. Madam Chair, may I respond? Go ahead, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, this is literally to make sure that we are funding 100% of what the state has promised to our existing national board certified teachers. Currently that amount is being prorated. Um, and if I may clarify that, um, these, while this is an increase in the in this particular line item, we are removing um, the Part C uh, targeted funding line item of, uh, gosh, I think it's $302,000 um, because what we are suggesting in our initiative is to fully fund the National Board Certified Teachers sal Salary Supplement with the credential fee that the state is um, receiving from teachers, educators who are, have, or who are paying those credentialing fees. There's over a million dollars available um, from those credentialing fees, which is more than sufficient to fund the, the total need of our current nationally board certified teachers. And um, there is a, an attachment, I believe, um, that Ms. Rizzler has shared with um, the committee that kind of outline, that, that does outline all of this math. May I ask a follow-up, Madam Chair? Uh, sure, and then Representative Purse. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so when you're removing it from um, Part C, is, was the old initiative or was as proposed in the budget uh, a part of the total cost of education? Yes, it was. Thank you. Representative Purse. Uh, I got both everything answered through that whole exchange. Thank you very much. Appreciate hearing about it. Okay. Um, so I think uh, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, I will have uh, Chair Brennan move on to the Maine Community College system. Well, you might wanna, why don't we just do the, um, if you don't mind, I see the three higher eds there. Um, why don't we just do um, all three? Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
if we move to the main community college system, we're recommending um, a 3% uh, increase in each year of the biennium uh, to the uh, operating expenses or operating budget of the community college. We're also recommending uh, an appropriation each year of the biennium of $2.5 million for workforce development um, programs offered by the community college. Uh, in particular, there's an interest in nursing and healthcare related uh, workforce development uh, programs. But that 2.5 is in each year of the biennium. The third part of the proposal um, is that there be either a set aside, an earmark, or a notation um, that if there is federal money available for workforce development, um, that at least five million of that those funds uh, be granted to the community college for workforce development. Uh, their proposal was for 7.5. Uh, million, and we're asking for the 2.5 uh, out of general fund in each year of the biennium, and the additional 5 million uh, to be earmarked uh, if there are, in fact, federal money monies available. Uh, I, the the one comment I would I would add, uh, which would be true for the university and for Maine Maritime Academy as well as the community college, that as you know, uh, uh, they received a 3% increase in FY1920, but were flat funded last year uh, due to the fact that we adjourned and did not come back and act in a supplemental uh, to provide an increase. The governor's recommendation is to continue uh, flat funding for the next two years. And uh, clearly uh, it was a unanimous vote of the committee uh, to support this three-part proposal. Thank you. It looks like Representative Corey uh, has a question. Oh, looks like he took his hand down. Uh, Representative Purse. Sorry about that. I just, I took my hand down instead of, so I think you may have just answered my question, but so the, the governor didn't make any proposals in terms of increasing these budgets. These initiatives are, are from the committee itself, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Representative Purse. Uh, thank you. So with terms of the main community college systems and the workforce, would that be through the quality uh, centers that we allocated 2.5 million when we went into early recess last year? Or is it just not specifically sent anywhere, but just for a workforce? Um, I, I, we, we didn't have a specific recommendation, but certainly if President Dagler's here um, and can answer that question, he'd be in a better position. Uh, we voted the, the 2.5 for quote, workforce development. And um, in, in particular, there seemed to be an emphasis on healthcare related uh, uh, job creation. I can follow up at a later time with okay. them. I just wondered if, you, if your committee talked about that specifically, thanks. Uh, Representative Arada has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with regard to the 3% increases, um, those are not calculated correctly. Um, if you look on page A93 for the community college system and page A487 for the University of Maine system, um, you look at that baseline um, allocation from general fund, you multiply it times 3%. For the University of Maine, you get the correct number for the first year, but for the second year, when you compound it, right, so you add the 3% back to the baseline, just like any other compounding interest, um, you actually get for the second year a 5.19% um, increase for the second year. And I haven't complete, fully completed the math for the University of Maine, but it looks to be the same. So if they're asking, asking for a 5.19% increase for 22, 23, that's fine. But, but let's not call it 3% if it's actually 5.19%. Uh, well, Griffin Verata, I, I appreciate your math. <laughs> and um, I, clearly the intent of the committee and the vote was uh, 3% uh, annual increases. So, uh, whomever does the calculation, I will rely on them uh, to do the calculation. 
but uh, that the the intent was the three percent. Right, and co compounded just like any other right interest payment that you would get from your bank or pay to your bank. Okay, I just this this kind of stood out to me because the same thing happened in the last biennial budget, and. Um, not that I'm against funding the colleges, but I think if it's going to be 3%, let's call it 3%. If it's 6%, we'll call it 6%. I'm a, I like accuracy. So. Well, Representative Millett has her hand up. Uh, Representative Millett has her hand up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think it's just to reiterate, it was 3% increase for each year. So 3% increase for this year, then a 3% increase on the number that we appropriate this year for next year, mm -hmm. right? So um, I believe that's what's reflected in our report back. <laughs> who, who ultimately will decide what the final number is? We will. We will, okay. Perfect. All right, thank you. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> um, let's see, so, um, is there anything, I mean, while we're on this uh, section of the higher eds, um, anything else, any questions from APROPS for our education colleagues um, about uh, this section of the higher eds? All right, I'm not seeing any. Um, going back to the, your opening comments, um, Chair Brennan, is this kind of the, um, the bulk or what, what you would say the meat of your report back um, that you wanted to make sure we discussed together today? Are there any other um, initiatives either that are in the budget that you'd like to discuss or outside of the budget that you'd like to, to flag that are in the report back? Uh, the short answer to your question, uh, Senator Breen, is, is yes. Uh, this is, uh, these are the major uh, items that we wanted to discuss with you today. And uh, the overwhelming, we had 106 pages uh, of the budget to work through and the overwhelming majority of that, 95%, we voted in uh, and, and supported that. Uh, and, and these new initiatives we thought were important enough and critical enough to bring directly to your attention. Um, I, I would just add, uh, as an aside, this is just to answer your question directly from me, not necessarily from the committee, but uh, there are clearly other issues that were identified uh, that we don't have a purview over the budget uh, related to broadband, mental health, and workforce development. And uh, certainly going forward, uh, any initiative that this committee might be considering in regards to broadband has an over, overlapping uh, effect and positive effect on uh, uh, what we're experiencing with broadband and education. Uh, I know that there's a, a major initiative from the governor in terms of addressing mental health issues. And we've heard uh, significant uh, testimony from a number of different places about uh, the impact that COVID-19 has had on students, teachers, uh, families, and staff. And we'd like to work with you uh, as those issues uh, unfold. And then uh, again, generally speaking, uh, we have considerable uh, uh, issues before us in terms of workforce development within uh, uh, public education. And I know that uh, the committee has a concern about what's happening in public education, but also workforce development in general. So uh, those might be three areas that there's overlapping uh, uh, concerns that we have that obviously wouldn't be reflected in our report back to you uh, in the budget. Understood. And, Thank you for also, flagging them. I'd also note that uh, the Senate Chair, uh, Senator Daughtry is here and I'd be more than happy to uh, have her jump in at this point and add any additional comments. Well, I, I um, see that Representative McRae has his hand up, but I did want to give Senate Chair Daughtry a moment to, um, to answer that question as well. And then uh, Representative McRae, if you don't mind, I'll come back to you after that. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I uh, apologize for being late. We had, I had another engagement, but just want to introduce myself. I am 
Senator Maddie Daughtry, I represent Senate District 24, which are the communities of Brunswick, Freeport, Harpswell, and Pownall. And I would like to extend my gratitude to my House Chair, Representative Brennan, for leading our report back. And I think he just eloquently really described some of the challenges that our committee is facing at this time. I mean, all of us right now, if we talk to any of our constituents, the safety of our students and making sure that our you know, staff and faculty and teachers are safe as well is at the foremost of people's thoughts. And also, I think looking at everything we've been over the past 12 months shows how you know crucial this portion of our budget is whether it's dealing with you know preschool all the way up to the higher eds which we were just discussing and i think there's a multifaceted amount of issues facing us and i'm really proud of the work that our committee has done the report back is i think one of uh the most bipartisan that has come out of our committee and really shows the passion and how we really dug in about this so obviously happy to ask you know, answer any more questions but just um you know wanted to echo a lot of the sentiments that representative brennan said as well thank you very much senator daughtry uh representative mccray thank you madam chair and sort of like murphy's law if it can happen it will happen right at the most inappropriate time so i had to step away for about five minutes and i came back just as well the four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which had to have to do with the uh, main school of science and math and I did, I don't know what was said, but I do want to point out if it wasn't uh, mentioned that <clears throat> I've met with them. And one of the major concerns was the fact that they had the foreign students that just couldn't attend here, many, many from China. And if that was brought up, I, I apologize for having to step out, but that far exceeds the $450 shortfall that they have, which is the reason for the request. And I thank the committee for their indulgence. Thank you, Representative McCray. Um, we did uh, touch on it, but you know, I can see that given your passion about it, you wanna echo that, that makes sense to me. Um, so are there any other sort of, um, I mean, uh, obviously I think all those issues that you uh, touched on are gonna, are, are in front of us in front of this committee in one way or another, whether it's um, future bond issues for additional broadband or you know new federal money that's available for additional broadband, um, mental health, teacher preparation, work for all of that is in front of us. So um, I think that for now, um, I will just throw it open one more time to any education, uh, sorry, any appropriations folks to um, ask any more clarifying uh, questions. And of course, this is our first conversation about the report back. Um, obviously we have members on uh, appropriations who will be really uh, digging in to this part of the biennial. So it's perfectly, uh, possible that you'll be hearing from individual members uh, in the coming weeks as we try to come to some consensus. Uh, Representative Millett. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of follow-up questions for either Hillary Rissler or the chairs and staff working together. Um, it would be good if you could recalculate in those areas where we're not quite clear on the intent uh, and give us a, a net increase on the general fund side for the uh, programs that you oversee uh, so we can see the big picture in terms of the biennial cost increase if all of your majority reports were endorsed. And a second question that intrigues me, but I'm not up to speed on, on the flow of federal grants to either pre-K to grade 12 or higher ed that are either in the pipeline or maybe coming as a result of the more recent action in Washington. And if you have insights into those larger amounts of money that may be forthcoming, do you have any thought or could you advise us during the next few months of whether or not uh, those monies as they flow, if they bypass the legislative appropriations process, might very well influence your request for increased general fund money. It's a question that I don't expect an answer now on, obviously, because I suspect that none of us really know, but it would seem to me that as we try to prioritize both 
the um, upcoming um, monies from DC with our general fund budget, we ought to try to uh, correlate and coordinate as much as possible. Um, just a general question, Madam Chair, and certainly I don't expect an answer right now. Yeah, um, thank you for flagging it, Representative Millett. I would, I would say also that um, it's likely that the administration will be um, introducing a change package that might reflect some of this um, newly available federal money. Um, so um, we might be coming back to you, um, as Representative Millett said, to get your input on whatever um, priorities or uh, whatever framework, I guess I'll say that the administration might be using for those new funds. Um, it looks like Representative Arada and Representative Brennan have their hands up. Representative Arada, would you like to ask a question? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a question about um, page 24 and its corresponding page, page 50, the School Safety Center. Um, there was a divided report there and I'm just like a little more information if you have it about the debate that went on, maybe. Um, Chair Daughtry or Chair Brennan, which one of you would like to answer that? Uh, if you could, uh, what page was that or what was the issue? Um, 24. And what? I may be able to help that if um, my chairs okay. do not remember. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Rissler. Sure, so I don't have the exact numbers for you, but um, that is one of those corresponding um, initiatives where there was actually an increase in general fund to continue those positions. And I uh, believe those who voted in opposition to moving those in were in opposition to that increase in funds. It was not one of the position transfers where it was just a net zero. Thank you, Ms. Okay, Rizzo. Echo that so that's again. why there's a decrease on page 24. So they opposed the decrease on page 24 because the increase on page 50 is greater. Is that, is that why? Ms. Risler, are you prepared to answer that or should we get, should we leave it out there and let you return to um, get the answer to our analysts who can get it to Representative Arata? Sure, why don't we do that? I can get some information. I, mean, I can't. I can't really say the the why. I can only reflect the conversation at the time. Was that because there was an increase? Um, that's why it was voted against. Okay. All right. Yes, I'd like more information because the report back well it shows a decrease on page twenty four, and that, so I'm trying to make everything fit together. It's a, this is a big puzzle, isn't it? <laughs> I right, thank you, um, Representative Brennan, and then Representative Corey. Uh, again, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, I'm glad that uh, Representative Mellett uh, brought up the issue about federal funding, because uh, obviously that um, is going to play a big part in the discussion that we just had uh, going forward. And um, based on the information I have, which is not definitive by any means, uh, in, in the last federal stimulus package in November, there was roughly 183 million um, that came to the state of Maine for K through 12 education. And that funding is uh, being distributed as we speak. Uh, school districts uh, put together a plan and applied for the money and it's uh, allocated based on Title I uh, funding, federal Title I funding criteria. Uh, so school districts will get various allotments uh, relative to their Title I uh, uh, funding of that $183 million. My understanding is that the most recently passed uh, stimulus package, the one just last week, is that there's $411 million uh, that's allocated for K through 12 ed education for the entire state of Maine. And certainly we have not had discussions with DOE or anybody else about um, how that would be uh, uh, allocated I, I suspect that there would be similar Title I restrictions to it. But I will, would point out in the $183 million, and again, I think it would be true of the 411, a substantial portion of that money is set aside for student assessment, as well as academic um, uh, uh, gap or academic loss programs. So it asks school districts 
uh, to uh, look at ways that they can assess where students are at uh, currently and also look at strategies for addressing uh, academic loss uh, over time. Uh, that money also can be used for um, uh, spacing of uh, school facilities and to address uh, immediate uh, COVID-19 uh, related issues that uh, might be confronting a local school district. So um, again, that's not a whole lot to tell you at this point. Um, there, there's also a significant amount of money that would be available to the universities. And some of that, um, which is not bad, is directed uh, specifically at homeless uh, college students. <laughs> so um, I, I think we would welcome the opportunity to continue to work with you and to talk with you um, as the details of this federal money becomes more apparent and make sure that we're directing it and, and ways to address many of the issues that we've identified within the Education Committee. Um, Representative Millette, I see your hand up. If you would just wait a second. I also see my analyst coming on, which usually means she has something um, informative to say. <laughs> not, not, I'm not sure about informative, but if you wanna circle back to that initiative on page 24, um, related to facility safety and transportation. Mm -hmm. I think the confusion is that it's one of those, and I think we've talked about it in our committee, one of those hybrid initiatives that actually does a bunch of things. The one on page 24, the only one that relates to is the last sentence of the initiative, reducing funding and facilities safety and transportation program related to an operational reorganization. So in that one, the only that all of all those words, the only ones that apply to that program is the last sentence. So if you turn then over to page 50, the rest of it is in that one, which is um, doing some transferring and also continuing some limited period positions. So when they're continuing those limited period positions, that's what's going to cost money. It's also costing some general fund money because they're transferring some things from federal to general fund. So it's, it's one of those hybrids that is difficult to parse out by just reading it. So, um, but we'll get, you, we'll get you a better parse out of that to the uh, appropriations committee, but I just didn't want the confusion to continue, so. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Representative Millette and then Representative Corey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to um, piggyback off of Representative Brennan's comments about federal aid, uh, there's a couple of things that I have learned over the past year um, that I think will be important for um, our committee and perhaps yours to keep in mind. One is that um, there have been varying degrees of restrictions on how these funds can be used. Um, and that has proven to be challenging for many of our districts. It's unclear to me at this point um, what kind of restrictions specifically will be required of this latest round that will um, be shared hopefully sometime soon. The other um, thing that I learned from the department was that the schools districts need to be very careful on utilizing federal funds to um, in place of um, our normal uh, state funded um, activities because that lowers their spending in those areas and can then negatively impact what their cost of education will be calculated at going forward. Um, so I, I look forward to understanding more about how this will all work in the latest round. And I'm sure the department will have, um, and, the, and the administration will have some clear ideas about how to navigate um, these waters. Thank you. Uh, Representative Corey. Uh, Representative Corey, I can't hear, are you speaking? I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to, to ask these questions because I haven't really figured it out yet, but I'm assuming that these school safety center items we're talking about are both on page 24, which is um, reference number 923, but I'm also finding this on page 50 which I'm guessing is reference number 928 and 
929, correct? Does that I sound don't know. like where we're at on both of those? And then the other thing that I'd like to know is at least on the committee votes um, with the in report and the out report, who exactly voted these items in and out so that I know which committee members I do voted have on the straw votes. Okay. I do have that information in my notes, um, uh, Senator Breen. I'd love to you whether you'd like me to share that now or just follow up uh, with that information. Uh, I would say, why don't you um, follow up with uh, Representative Corey? Sure. Thank you. I think um, and you would they're probably straw votes and, you know, they don't normally get recorded. But if you want that information, it, um, Ms. Wischler can make it available. And then I could I could talk to you. Ms. Rizzler, in terms of just what all of these um, votes mean with each one of these initiatives, what's happening. Okay, great, thank you. Um, we can also, um, uh, Representative Corey, you know, Rachel uh, Tremblay in OFPR is the person who um, is the OFPR analysts or the OFPR resource for the all the education parts of the budget. So she is a resource to our committee and to you. And um, I'm sure she would um, set some time aside at your request to walk through it. Um, she's a, a wealth of information. Um, looks like, um, I think we have come to uh, a close. Uh, I don't see any other hands up. Um, I just wanna thank everybody. Um, I know this is a lot of work for your committee uh, to wade through um, and we really appreciate the staff time and the committee time uh, that went into it. Um, as I said, I think uh, the, the conditions under which um, this budget was proposed and you did your report back are shifting because of the new um, federal monies. So um, I know that we will be uh, hearing from you again and we look forward to that. Um, so I think we're gonna um, let our education colleagues sign off and appropriations people, if you would stay on uh, for a few minutes, we can just talk about the rest of our week and um, I wanna say thank you to the education folks and um, see you soon. It was good to see you all in person last week. Oh, thank you. It's good thank to see you. you as well. Bye-bye. Um, so uh, Representative Purse, Maureen, you wanna get, get on and we'll just make sure everybody's on the same page for our schedule for this week. Um, tomorrow, I know we are meeting with our colleagues on Health and Human Services to get a presentation from the department on the recent Medicaid reimbursement rate study that they've done. Um, the link actually is from the HHS clerk, not appropriations. So um, let us know uh, later today if you're having trouble finding it and we can make sure you have it. Um, and then on Thursday, well, we have chairs and leads on Wednesday. Um, and then we're going to have uh, our committee again all together on Thursday at one o'clock to hear from our colleagues on judiciary. Maureen, is there anything I forgot? No, you did not, but let me make it clear that the judiciary report back is on Thursday, not Tuesday as I mentioned in the grid and some kind person pointed out that Tuesdays and Thursdays are not the same day. So yes, it is Thursday. <laughs> All right, uh, Representative Millett. Thank you, Madam Chair. Perhaps we'll discuss this, uh, Senator, and the chairs and leads, but I wondered if you had a, a rough idea of when you would like to start doing uh, work sessions on the various report backs so that we could kind of schedule our own caucuses at the party level in advance, well in advance, and Absolutely. be prepared for them. Yes, 
um, that's something we anticipate talking about uh, Wednesday to get some, get a schedule together that uh, so we can make sure we're all caucusing uh, appropriately to get ready for work sessions. Thank you. Um, sure. Uh, Representative Facto, did you have your hand up? No. Okay. Um, anything else that, um, oh, Representative Hymanson. Yeah, I just wanted to um, publicly thank the whole committee for our work on the supplemental budget. And um, that was a real uh, piece of art, I thought. And I appreciate um, everyone's dedication to moving that forward. So thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, anything else before we sign off and reconvene tomorrow at um, nine. And I guess I'll just echo Representative Corey what I said about um, OFPR. You know, there's a there's a topic person in OFPR for all of these committees, and I think um, that's probably the place for you to have that kind of in-depth information rather than the committee analyst. Um, the, two, the two offices, I mean, if necessary, you could certainly go to Ms. Rissler, but I would, I would suggest you start with the OFPR person because um, they have been in the wading around in these policy waters and budget waters for a long, long time and, and can really pretty much answer anything. Yeah, Representative Corey, and then Chair Purse. Yeah, I just, I just wasn't sure. I just wanted to do my job comprehensively. Yeah. I obviously haven't been on this committee as long as you have, so thank right. you for that information. Sure, um, Chair Purse. Yeah, I would just echo that. I think being new last session, uh, OFPR was just a, a great information. Always ready to help, answer any question, no matter how. Um, silly I might have thought it was they're just ready to help at every level and then I also think the interpretation of the votes from our as we go forward getting these report backs it's the the analysts in OFPR and in all the committees are just not there's such they have such high professionalism that they would never comment on why a vote was a certain way they would only comment on you know the the things in the you know the vote not the vote but the the work behind the vote, you know, the numbers and things. So just so everyone, uh, just so for that clarity, because I wasn't sure what exactly you were asking Representative Corey about that, so. Representative Corey. Yeah, I just want to make um, perfectly clear. I wasn't asking for, you know, the policy reasons for the vote. I was simply asking for who voted a, a certain way. So you may have misinterpreted what I had asked for. Yeah, Thank and you. Just going, yeah, sure. Absolutely. And just going forward as we get more of these in. So, but again, OFPR, unbelievable group of people. So go use oh, them. <laughs> any questions about the rest of the week? Hmm. Um, all right. Well, um, I will say thank you all. Good to see you. Nice to have seen you in person last week. Um, 